is God taking this people out of Israel and putting them into a promised land? Now, the Bible says very clearly that this is the smallest nation, the most insignificant of all nations and people. They're just a small handful, and God chooses them. Now, why is he bringing them here to a testing place, and why is he going to take them into the land of Canaan? Is it because he just wants to give them new houses, and he's got a special people he wants to just bless, and they're going to inherit vineyards and milk and honey, and they're going to be able to sit idle in pleasure? And they're going to just be able to sit there and praise and worship God and offer sacrifices from generation to generation. No, 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 no. You see, God loves the world, the Bible says. And God loved the world just as much then as he loves him now. God was love from the beginning. The Bible says that prophetically all the prophets knew that the law would go out from Jerusalem. That God was trying to raise up missionaries with a testimony. He was trying to build an army that he could use, that his truth could go out through the whole then known world. They were not going into Canaan land just for their own comfort. They weren't going to go there to so that all of the goodness and grace of God could be absorbed in themselves. Not at all. That's not why God saved you and that's not why he saved me. God is out always searching and looking for an army, looking for a people that are tested and tried and have proven him faithful because it's not just going out and preaching an unproven gospel. If you haven't proved the gospel, you can't believe the gospel you preach. God is trying to produce something in these people. God wanted them, they're standing on the brink of a catastrophe. They're standing on the brink of a disaster. A crisis like they've never known. You say, well, does God expect these people to trust Him when the army is coming down and everything looks impossible? God expects them to trust and believe Him and not doubt their situation? Yes, absolutely. For without faith it's impossible to please Him. And they that come to Him believe, must believe that He is, that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God is trying to produce a people with faith and confidence in Him to become messengers, tested and tried. But you see, God can't do anything where there is no faith, where there is all doubt. God in flesh couldn't do it and wouldn't do it. Jesus couldn't do mighty miracles there because of their doubt and their unbelief. He rebuked the Red Sea, the Scripture says in verses 9 to 12, and it was dried up and he saved them. He redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Then believed they his words. Then sang they his praises. After you get a good report, and after you've got victory, and after you've seen deliverance, anybody can sing. The Bible said, then they believed his words. Folks miserably failed, because the very next verse reads, they soon forgot his works, and waited not for his counsel. They despised the pleasant land. They believed not his word. Oh, folks, I believe God is still searching for that people. That people who will be his greatest evangelistic tool. You see, God's not looking for some highly educated seminarian to take the gospel to the world. He's not looking for mega churches with multiplied thousands of people who've never been tested and tried. They don't look at reality. And then when the hard times come, when the testing times come, there are no resources. They have nothing to draw on. And God can't use that kind of a people to be a testimony to a lost world. Not at all. He's not looking for that. Gideon had called for the nation to come and fight the Midianites. And many thousands responded to his call. Got to delve finally to 300 tested men. God is not looking for some great, powerful religious organization. He's looking for individuals. He's looking for men and women of God who have been through the flood, who have been through the fire, who have been tested and have come through with faith, tested as gold, tried in the fire. I want to tell you, the world is looking. The world is watching for people like that. Not to just throw scriptures around. Not just trying to get everybody to come to their church. But coming on the job when everybody on that job knows that you're going through the trial of your life. 
You're facing calamity. You're going to work even though you are broken and you have a heart that can, you can hardly stand the day. You've been rocked by hard times. Please don't tell me that you're making a commitment to faith unless you're also making three other commitments. A commitment to this word daily. A commitment to your knees so that you're not in situational faith at all, but you're developing a relationship. It's a relationship faith. And also, you've come to understand how much God loves you. You know how I'm convinced of His love? On my knees and in this book. I read of His love, and then the Holy Spirit reveals it to me in the secret closet of prayer. From the 121st Psalm, the Lord is thy keeper. He's your shade upon the right hand. The sun will not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He's preserved thy soul. God said, I'm your keeper. I'm your preserver. I'll keep you. I'll preserve you. Trust me.